possible. Um, Tomas, could I um, ask you as well to just also answer the question in terms of what uh, we would propose to be doing differently from the government's current strategy? Well, I suppose the only problem with the current government strategies is it seems to be doing everything half-heartedly. Um, Jerry Clean commented on how we should be supporting public health on the ground. When you think about strategically what one needs to get control of the virus, to have an aggressive suppression scenario, we need to, we need to crush, we need to get the cases down to very low numbers. Uh, we need to prevent new cases from coming in, and then we need to be able to respond to cases as they come in. Uh, the first is we need to have a more effective lockdown. This lockdown has not been as effective as the first one. Everyone knows this. And part of the reason for that is it's a more transmissible variant. But part of the reason is also because we haven't been taking this lockdown seriously enough as a society. Now, it works in Cork, it works in Kerry, it works in uh, Kilkenny and works in about 10 other counties. So we know that this lockdown can work, but there are differences between counties and it's not because, it's likely not because of the behavior of individual people in those counties. It's because of systemic differences in how we're doing this lockdown. We all know there's too much traffic. We all know there's too much work in the workplace, including in the public sector, that doesn't need to be happening. And there are high risk work environments that are open and are contributing to transmission around them. So the solution would have been uh, back in January and is still the solution now to have a more efficacious lockdown, which means a shorter lockdown. And of course, people respond to this with a certain degree of caution because a lot of people are restricting themselves and their families as much as they possibly can. Um, and I don't think anyone requires, expects those people to do anything more. Um, I don't think anyone here is talking about severe curfews or, or greater restrictions than a lot of people are already experiencing, but to make them more effective by ensuring that a greater proportion of society uh, can restrict their movements as much as possible so that we can get case numbers down. And frankly, part of that is to take um, a large degree of caution with respect to opening secondary schools over the coming months, because we've known that even with the previously existing versions of SARS-CoV-2, that teenagers transmit the virus just as much as adults. Uh, and certainly with the B117 variant, schools are gonna to contribute to the community. So having a focused lockdown with, with targets in mind that bring cases down on a county by county basis through green zones is one thing that I think we should be doing differently. The other is mandatory hotel quarantine from all travel origins, including the European Union and Great Britain, as NEF had recommended in June 2020. That's, that's still necessary. Um, we eliminated the first wave of the virus. We never got to zero COVID because we always had some cases, but we did eliminate the first wave. Uh, the reason we didn't see zero COVID was as we eliminated the first wave, a parallel second wave was seeded by travel from abroad. And this has been empirically shown to be the case by the genomic analysis done by Paddy Mallon and his team. All of the second wave SARS-CoV-2 in Ireland was uh, seeded by international travel. There are variants that were not here during our first wave. So not only did we know that we had an effective lockdown one, but lockdown one eliminated the virus here. Uh, so we can do that again, but we have to this time keep case keep keep the virus out uh, including keeping out new variants that of course can be more transmissible or vaccine resistant as we discussed um, and the third thing of course is proper contact tracing going back 10 days so we are not only missing a large proportion of the cases in the country in the sense that at least 20 percent of cases at any given time seem to be community transmission which means mystery cases uh, even the cases that we're identifying we need to know the root tree of where those transmission chains are coming from. Because we don't know the root of where cases are coming from, then we don't know uh, how, why, we don't know why different counties are doing things, are performing differently. Um, so those are concrete things that we can do and that we have done in the past in the case of an effective lockdown. So we know we can do it 
uh, to a large degree of success uh, or that other countries have done successfully and are, do are doing successfully with huge results and rewards. Um, we are dealing with each of those topics with crush lockdown, with, with contain travel restrictions and with chase public health measures. We're, do we're doing them all in a very perfunctory way. And as a result of that, we're getting we're getting no rewards. We're getting a very long lockdown, and we're exposing ourselves to risk of new variants. So, those that that would be a summary of the concrete things that that we can do. And I think it's fair to say there's widespread public support for for all of these measures because everyone would like a shorter lockdown. Ninety percent of people want mandatory hotel quarantine, and although one generally doesn't poll how much public health, how much people want to support our public health physicians. We can generally assume that the public are very happy with us, with us doing so uh, and with doing everything we can to, to change the way we're, we're managing that aspect, that aspect of things. And it's, I think it's important to remember that in January, when many people were advocating for a zero COVID situation because of the third wave, uh, so there was some defeatist thinking about this, saying that, it would be a four month lockdown, which it wouldn't have had to have been even then because Melbourne had a four month lockdown. Well, with the current, and they got to zero COVID. Well, with the current situation, we're going to have a five month lockdown minimally. And with the current strategy, it will not get us to zero COVID unless we change things. Um, so I think that even though the story is changing very much with vaccination, uh, vaccination is not going to be a silver bullet. Vaccination makes elimination easier. Elimination makes vaccination easier, which is a very important thing to remember. Um, but the current approach, uh, what is most worrying about the current approach today is as Jerry Killeen pointed out, the Neffet letter only uh, considers scenarios where we're going to have some kind of a fourth wave, uh, ranging from a fourth wave that would be a very minor fourth wave of the level of our second wave uh, or potentially a much more significant fourth wave with a lot of long COVID and significant ICU admissions and significant death. Um, and even with vaccine, even with successful vaccination over the next eight weeks, uh, that doesn't completely remove the, the risk of that fourth wave or the damage that, that the tail of that fourth wave will do. Uh, and the exposure to a fifth wave, a fifth wave either being caused by the Brazilian P1 variant or another variant, or a fifth wave just caused by another cycle of, of lockdown and restrictions, because we won't have significant vaccination to protect us from a fifth wave uh, before August. Thanks, Tomas. 